G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Oof, Monday evening here in Australia, so I was getting ready for Monday morning over in the States and things are looking good. Now again, there could be a bit of a CME gap, so Bitcoin may see a bit of a retracement. I mean, it sort of already has, but it kind of recovered that as well. We'll have a look at the charts in a minute. But we are nearly at $2.4 trillion, so I think this is getting close to the highest we've ever been, so that is good. That is nice. 45.6, not sorry, 45.9%. This BTC dominance just gets lower. Ether's rising and gas prices, wow, 35. Still not great, but that is a thousand times better what they have been. And again, I'm, I'm, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but I'm getting really excited about Ethereum. And hopefully, again, you know, uh, the Berlin hard fork seems to have been doing what it sort of said it would do and EIP 1559 you know again yeah if Ethereum can it again it's the scaling issues and the fees issues and I mean look at Ethereum 3100 we're getting up to 3200 this is great and it, Ethereum will drag Bitcoin up in all fairness if everything starts to do well more people are going to get into Bitcoin as well they're just not going to get into Bitcoin if it continues to go downwards and if everything does well people will be more inclined to buy Bitcoin if the whole market's doing well. So that's really what I'm looking for at the moment. Is Ethereum going to, you know, drag up Bitcoin as well? Because it was doing that last year. It was leading the race, leading the way. Then it kind of died off for a while and Bitcoin led the way. And so will this be a, you know, kind of tit for tat thing? Not that it's a tit for tat in a bad way, but in a good way. Because again, look where it, let's have a look. What is the market all time high? I think we must be there. Look, we can. Oh no, it won't say. So let's go. Two point three four three. So we, hang on, yeah, two point three four three. So that was the peak, and so we are at two point three eight, two point three four. So there you go. We're actually that uh, two point three eight, two point. What's that? three four three that means where we are at all time highs if i'm reading that right i get the feeling like my eyes aren't helping me 2.343 and we're at 2.348 so there you go we are at all time highs so you know th this is good news but again whenever it gets too good i always get nervous and i don't want to be like the nervous nelly and you know the bearer of bad news uh not that i think bad news is coming but i just i get a little bit worried look Again, I've spoke about this before. I've been too bearish when I needed to be more bullish, and I've been nowhere near enough bullish uh, when I've, you know, when I have been bullish. So for me at the moment, I'm thinking I don't, I just, I can't see any big corrections coming anytime soon. No one is going to sell that much Bitcoin at the moment to push it down. There's just continually people buying. Now people aren't overly happy to buy at sixty thousand, but Man, that fifty-four, fifty-six thousand dollar level—they're just jumping all over it. So, yeah, right. Twenty-four hours. It looks pretty good, but what's really pumped? What's done the best? All right, Venus. Never heard of it. Ontology, Waves, Uniswap, OKB, Ethereum Classic. I've, again, I don't know what's going on with that, but anyway, congratulations to those that were holding it. Hedera, Maker, Stella, Aave, Polygon again continues to go. I think 89 cents was its highest, so it's still under there. Uh, and I don't think it's going to break it like anytime soon. But again, I could be wrong. There's a lot of good stuff happening with Polygon. Heaps of really, really good gains. What about losses though? What has not done so well in the last 24 hours? Nano, again, 7.6% and you're still up 50%. For seven days i don't think anyone's too worried about that phantom again you know 3.2 percent but you're up 156 percent for the last seven days the last week no one is caring about that again unless you bought the top then these are hurting a little bit but there's basically two losses in the top 100 and everything else is in the, is in the green and none of these are bad losses now again that has me slightly nervous but again i've probably been too bearish when I needed to be more bullish and I haven't been bullish enough when I was bullish 
So, you know, we'll just ride it out and I'm going to try and stay positive and no, this is that, you know, we've leveled off for long enough and this is where the entire market starts to move up. That's what I'm hoping. Again, not financial advice. And every time I think I'm right, I'm always, not always, but I somewhat frequently get proved <laughs> wrong. So we'll just have to wait and see. But, you know, at the moment, things are looking really, really good. All right, the Bitcoin chart, let's have a look. Bitcoin has done what I was hoping it would do, but wasn't sure. We use the 50-day moving average as support. So that's really what we've done at the moment. We can see we got above it. We got above it. We had a red day. We came down and we used it as support. And now we're pushing off that. So it's not, you know, we're not out of the woods just yet. We still need to break above that 60 kind of four $65,000 level. This can get up to sort of, you know, roughly here, 61, 62,000 and roll over and we make another low. I just, I'm not sure it's going to do that. Excuse me. I think the 50 day moving average is probably going to hold pretty well at the moment. But look, time will tell. That's that, that look, that's what I think is going to happen, that the 50 day moving average holds. And I think we, you know, probably... I don't know if we're going to rocket past this, but I think we're probably going to range a little bit. And again, Bitcoin will just slowly get dragged up if Ethereum continues to do really well. That's what I think is going to happen, but that's not guaranteed what is going to happen. We'll just have to see how that plays out. All right. Spoke about this a while ago. Bitcoin's most ambitious upgrade in years. Taproot is now being voted for on implementation. So uh, Bitcoin is 1,787 blocks away from uh, being more private and scalable if miners accept to implement uh, Taproot before the next difficulty adjustment. So look, they're not all on board yet. I mean, they've all kind of thrown their support by it, but they just haven't crossed over yet. You know, they've got to vote by doing some stuff online. I think they've got to add some stuff, add some information to the chain to say they support it or something. And they need to get to 90% plus. Now, every two weeks, they kind of uh, keep checking where it's at. Uh, and if they get to the end of their period and it hasn't happened, well, then it just goes away and they have to go back to the drawing boards. But it seems like most of them are, are going to go over, at least, you know, in theory, that's what they've said they're going to do. And I think that's going to be really good for Bitcoin and really bullish for Bitcoin because the problem is it's, you know, scalable. It's, it suffers the same fate as Ethereum sort of. It's not that scalable. And when lots of people are using Bitcoin, the fees go up and it starts to get slower. So Taproot is really, really big. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see. Is it going to take two weeks for the 90%? Is it going to take a month for the 90%? Uh, is it not going to get across the line and they have to go back to the drawing board? But look, I, I think it will get across the line and I think it'll happen fairly soon. I would be surprised if it takes much more than sort of two weeks or so. But, you know, I, I'm not a Bitcoin miner. I don't know what they're thinking. I just know what I've read uh, and heard. And I'm hoping this gets across the line because this is going to be really bullish for Bitcoin. Then we just need to get the Lightning Network, you know, much more uh, people on board with it. It's being used and it's working really well, but it hasn't been tested, you know, to see if, you know, that kind of mass adoption thing uh, will start to slow it down and something, you know, further than Lightning has to be uh, implemented. But I'm really happy with this. And again, I don't think it'll take long before it gets across the line. But, you know, time will tell. <laughs> I'm always, again, a bit, in, a bit indecisive, but that's me. Uh, I don't like to make too many calls unless I'm fairly certain. And, yeah, I'm just not exactly sure what's going to happen there. Pancake Swap is just killing it. So they continue to cook rivals, it says, as daily transactions close on 2 million transactions per day. So decentralized finance exchange PancakeSwap continues to break records for volumes and transactions, even eclipsing Ethereum. And that's why Ethereum really needs to, and I think they have kind of got a bit of a kick up the bum, a little bit of Ethereum. And that's why they're rolling out, you know, the hard fork in Ethereum, uh, the EIP 1559. And again, I think Ethereum 2.0 comes before the end of the year. Now, again, it's, it's looked like a, it's been talked about it coming before the year and then it's kind of had setbacks and things along the way, but I just think they can't kind of sit back because, you know, Binance Smart Chain and things like that will just kind of gain, take too much ground on, off them. And if they get too much ground, it just becomes really hard for Ethereum to kind of 
draw that back. They are still miles ahead uh, in terms of adoption and all the rest of it, but they are slowly losing some of that with the gas fees and things like that as well. So it says here, its daily transaction count is currently a whopping 1.93 million. So, I mean, that's big. Again, it's eclipsing Ethereum and things like that. So, you know, this is really good news for anyone who's on Binance as well. They have done extremely well. But unfortunately, now our next story <laughs> is not good for Binance Chain. And this has been happening somewhat frequently uh, on Binance Chain. So Binance Smart Chain Spartan Protocol loses $30 million in an exploit. Again, we'll have to wait and see. Is it an exploit or is it an inside job and a rug pull and all the rest of it? You know, unfortunately for Binance Smart Chain, you know, they've been doing really well with PancakeSwap and things like that. But they've had a number of... Uh, platforms have issues uh, that they have there and that's really going to hurt them. So Spartan Protocol, a decentralized protocol built on Binance Smart Chain for incentivized liquidity and synthetic assets, was exploited earlier on Sunday UTC due to a flawed liquidity share calculation in the protocol, resulting in a loss of more than 30 million according to a medium post by on-chain analysis and security startup uh, PeckShield. Now the problem is Someone's lost that 30 million. It's not 30 million of no one's money. <laughs> it's 30 million dollars of someone's money. And again, if it's some poor person who, you know, unfortunately just didn't take heed and threw in way too much money of this and probably got wrecked and, you know, possibly life, lost life savings, I hope that isn't the case. But unfortunately, that's what a lot of people do. They go too heavy into new projects that just, you know, don't have all the security checks and history behind them and they just get wrecked. And I, I'm hoping that hasn't happened to anyone, and particularly anyone who's watching this video. You know, sometimes, you know, it's the toughest lessons in life that, you know, make us, but also sometimes they can break us. And I just hope, you know, no one who's watching my video is in that break us uh, sort of section. I hope, yeah, you, if you have lost some money, it's, you know, something that you can, you know, get past and it's not going to be the end of you. That really is a shame. And again, you know, Binance, you know, these are happening almost every couple of weeks at the moment, so it is really a problem for them. Right, another cause for concern. I hate to, again, I'm just I'm talking about concern. I feel bad because I'm bullish on the market at the moment. But Dogecoin rises 10% after Elon Musk confirms coin will get SNL treatment. Like, I'm all for Dogecoin doing well if there's new tech coming out and, you know, stuff being built and all the rest of it. But at the moment, it's it's all just hype it's literally nothing else other than hype and you know if you've got a few dollars on there and it's turning into a lot of money great but i'm just i'm again i'm concerned that people might go all in on dogecoin and just get really wrecked when they when eventually the hype's not enough and look again hopefully i'm wrong maybe the hype is enough and that's all it needs and it goes on to become you know the new bitcoin i, I don't know i'm just i can't see it and I, i've you know i've been never completely wrecked but I've you know put my money into stuff that hasn't done well and has never been able to recover and I'm just I'm concerned that Dogecoin might do that to a few people because it's all just Elon putting out tweets and people jumping on board you know and again a couple of tweets from other celebrities and that talking about Doge <clears throat> it's not that they've done anything new there's no new tech there's you know nothing new kind of being built that I'm really aware of nothing big news anyway and so that has me really really worried Right, last but not least, Visa. All right, so Visa outlines five ways it's pushing into crypto. The financial services juggernaut, second quarterly earnings call this year identified five opportunities for the company. Number one, and it basically goes without saying, we don't have to go into it too much. They're gonna help you buy crypto, so that's great, but again, the fees are what's gonna knock you about when you're using Visa and PayPal and that. There is quite large fees so you know proceed at your you know your own caution understanding the fees but also they're going to help you spend crypto and so this is good as well so you know we do need that if crypto can never be sort of spent then it really isn't the currency that people talk about but in all fairness a lot of them aren't really currencies anyway that we probably need to move away from the cryptocurrency name because not all of them are currencies a lot of them are utility tokens and things like that and I like the idea of, you know, say you have a share, even a stock, that it's somehow 
able to be sort of spent. Like you own a full stock, you go to the shops and spend $3.35 on milk or whatever it may be, then $3.35 of that stock is now gone. I like the idea of that. Everything should be tokenized like that. Anything with value, we should be able to do something like that. But definitely crypto is going to help. So number three here is crypto in everyday finance. And this is where we need it. This is how we get that mainstream stuff going, along with also buying and spending. But this is really going to help. So Visa is helping financial institutions and fintechs to offer crypto to their customers. We need this. There's got to be more avenues, more on ramps to both buy it and sell it and, you know, use and ways to spend it and all the rest of it. Number four, settlement of crypto. This is really important too. So Visa's infrastructure lets financial institutions settle transactions in the US dollar peg stablecoin, USDC. Because this is the dollar still rules. Like you can love crypto as much as you want. And I love it. You know, I'm up there with the people who love it the most. But the dollar rules. You can't take your Bitcoin to the shop at the moment. You can't take your Ethereum to the shop at the moment. It's just not like that. Not everywhere is accepting it. And again, there's gas fees and all the rest of it. So we definitely, you know, we still need to peg it back to US dollars and things like that. And things that are easily transactable without high fees and that. And don't get me wrong, USDC is on Ethereum, but at least the fees are coming down. So this might, you know, again, start to push that, you know, worldwide adoption further so visa partnered with circle the company that creates usdc along with coinbase to integrate usdc later visa conducted a trial with crypto.com which sent usdc to visa's ethereum address at a crypto custody service anchorage visa announced on march 29th that the company completed its first usdc transaction on the ethereum blockchain so again it's all slowly happening it's you know and it is, you know, that saying that it's, you know, trickle, trickle at first, like so drip, drip, trickle, trickle, and then, you know, the floodgates just open and everything starts to happen really fast. And this is the last thing. So CBDCs, a lot of people are kind of worried about them and against them, and I don't like them all that much, but they are what's going to help push this narrative forwards. So central bank digital currencies, Visa wants to ride that wave and is busy trying to source central banks as clients. This will happen. It's a matter of time. Uh, it's fate a comply, as they say. You know, it's sort of guaranteed already. Uh, it's just a matter of time. That the space is growing too fast, too big. They'll simply get left behind. There's not a central bank that isn't going to come up with their own currencies uh, and get on board this whole cryptocurrency thing, whether they like it or not. They will get left behind, and they will be obsolete if they don't. All right, look, that's it for me. I've got a bit of a croaky voice. Been at work today. It's been a long day as well. Uh, so I'm not going to take up any more of your time. I've got to get some sleep. I've got a very early start again tomorrow. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Things are looking pretty good at the moment and pretty much everyone should be on that gain train at the moment. And I'll see you next time.